Cora TV. The world is thinking. We've talked a, a little bit about uh, the spiritual values that uh, religion brings to, uh, brings to the country. A question from a couple of the people in the audience is, do you think that atheism and agnosticism lack spiritual values? And moving in the same direction, why can't there be spiritual values without religion? And let's start with Mr. Maudlin. Well, I mean, that's, that's a difficult question. Uh, of course, people can be uh, very spiritual and um, uh, deeply moral uh, and be atheists. Um, how does that actually uh, function? I mean, I, I was surprised at the popularity of um, Richard Dawkins um, and Sam Harris's books recently. Because um, one of the things that really struck me is that um, they were, I, my opinion was I thought they were both surprisingly poorly argued. I think I could have made better arguments for atheism than they did. Um, they were, and they were angry. They were angry at religion. They just thought it was dumb. Um, and I don't think that's a profound critique. Um, but, you know, the religious people, we all get our values from somewhere, some vision of how the world should be, and many people act on those things. Uh, so. I, I've known there's a lot of people who've made uh, profound contributions to this country in uh, pushing us in better directions who did not have a, a spiritual basis for doing that. So I don't think the two necessarily go together, uh, but they often do. People do have, they, spiritual visions do uh, have political consequences, and that's how a lot of people, like most Americans, that's how they express them, is uh, uh, politically is uh, something stemming from some spiritual vision they've had. Mr. Prothero? Yeah, I think it's really, for me, the only way to answer that is to try to get into what the difference is between uh, religion and spirituality. I mean, my students at Boston University are very prone to say, as many young people are, and many even baby boomers are, I'm spiritual but not religious. And uh, I think what they mean by that is that they don't like certain forms of organized religion, certain forms of institutional religion. They may be meaning they didn't like their CCD classes when they were in ca when they were young Catholics. They may be meaning that they they um, think their minister is kind of goofy the way he dresses or she um, speaks. So I think uh, to a great extent the move toward talking about spirituality instead of talking about religion has to do with a kind of very typically American and I would say frankly Protestant. Um, uh, skepticism about um, institutional hierarchical religion uh, and uh, but as a religious studies person I don't accept the the sharp distinction I think that spirituality is a, a, a part of religion it always has been and that what we're seeing in contemporary America is an interest in extracting certain spiritual practices like say Buddhist meditation strategies out of the history of Buddhism out of the history uh, out of Buddhist philosophy or the classic case is yoga you know, extracting the spirituality, um, uh, the spiritual practice of yoga outside, out of a thousands year old religious tradition of uh, Hinduism. So uh, yes, you can have spiritual values without uh, religion, but I would say that spirituality really, to be understood at least from a historical uh, perspective, needs to be understood in light of the religious traditions that have uh, sustained it over the years. Rabbi Lerner. Yes, um, in, I have a synagogue here. I'm the rabbi of a synagogue in San Francisco called Beit Tikkun. And many of the people who come to my synagogue, to Beit Tikkun, are um, people who identify themselves as spiritual but not religious. Um, and um, they, when I ask them about that, they tell me about their reasons for being very angry at God or very angry at religions. And I must say that most of their re uh, reasons are very good. And I, I um, actually, if... If God or religion were only what most people have experienced, I'd be an atheist. <laughs> in other words, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe in the God that, that many people have been exposed to, and I certainly wouldn't, um, wouldn't uh, want to be identified with religious communities that have been extremely hurtful. And I say that also about my own religion, not just about other, other religions, because many of the people who come to my synagogue are people who 
um, identify with the Israeli peace movement and against the uh, against the occupation of the West Bank and uh, at, that is being done in part in the name of religion. And I, uh, luckily in our synagogue, because I, I'm, I support the, the position of the peace movement, people can come there. But for an awful lot of other people, they're estranged from the Jewish religious world entirely because it seems to be a cheerleading block for Israeli policy. So I don't blame people for a whole variety of reasons being angry at um, religion and saying I don't want to have any part of it. And I certainly would be the first to say that there is no reason in the world why one cannot be totally ethically sensitive and ethic as at least as ethically centered as anybody in the religious world without believing in God. And there's no reason in the world why people can't be spiritual without being religious. But having said that, I want to reemphasize the points that were made by the um, by the last two speakers, that there is something that is nurturing to that consciousness in the religious tradition that isn't so nurturing in the, um, in the traditions of global capitalism global, and the worldview that says that that which is uh, real is that which uh, can produce money and power. And that is the dominant religion that we live in. Only because it's so dominant, most people don't think of it as religion. They think of it as just as common sense. But that's what it is to be in a religion. To be in a religion really is to take its fundamental assumptions as self-evident. And so we live in a society which, in which the dominant values of this society constitute a religious system with all the same characteristics, including its own rituals, its own, um, its own ways of behaving, its own set of who's in and who's out. And that religious system um, is so pervasive that nobody gets that it's a religious system. I believe that we need other religious or spiritual systems to counter that dominant system. And I want to, so that's why I'm very supportive of people, but I don't believe there's any one right religious path. There are many, many religious paths, many right, any one right spiritual path. There are many such paths. They all may contribute to a different consciousness that's desperately needed in the world today, a consciousness of the unity of all humanity, of the need to protect the earth, uh, of the need for peace, of social justice, uh, of nonviolence those kinds of values that I don't see any other institutions even claiming as their central raison d'etre.